Hello friends, welcome back to our video lecture series on course title fluid mechanics 2. In this lecture, we will continue with our previous topic centrifugal pumps and we will be discussing losses and various efficiencies in the centrifugal pump. So before proceeding for the losses, uh, before proceeding for the discussion of efficiencies, uh, we should have an idea about the losses so we can uh, betterly understand about the efficiencies. So if you talk about the losses, there are uh, basically two to three types of losses which are taking place in the centrifugal pump. First is the hydraulic losses, second is the mechanical losses and third are said to be uh, some leakage losses. So in hydraulic losses, there are some uh, losses like say shock or ED losses at the entrance and at the exit from the impeller. So what are the losses which are going to take place? Uh, like say at the entrance of the impeller, at the exit of the impeller, uh, due to the shocks or due to the eddies formation or losses due to the friction in the impeller. Of course, uh, there is no material which is ideally smooth and that's why uh, there will be a certain amount of losses due to the friction when my water is moving through the impeller or moving, uh, gliding over the uh, blades of the impeller. Again, friction, friction and ED losses in the guide wings or diffuser and casing. So when my water is moving through that casing, again certain amount of losses which is going to take place due to the uh, uh, friction and eddies formation. Again some other hydraulic losses which are like say friction and other minor losses which are going to take place in this suction pipe and similarly the same losses which are going to take place in the delivery pipe. So those are the some hydraulic losses which we need to consider while uh, discussing efficiencies. Now uh, some mechanical losses. So mechanical losses are said to be a losses due to this uh, friction between impeller and the liquid which fills the clearance spaces between the impeller and casing. And again, losses are pertaining to the friction uh, of the main bearing and gland. So, mechanical losses are those losses which are going to take place due to the wearing and tearing effect. Again, some leakage losses like say a loss of energy due to the leakage of liquid is known as uh, leakage loss. Like say, uh, whenever my liquid is moving through this particular suction pipe and when it is entering through the casing, of course, if there are some leakages in that process, then there will be a, some water which is going to loss that is said to be a leakage loss. Again, when my uh, water is moving out from the impeller and moving through this casing again if a uh, certain amount of water is getting leak water is getting leak in this process again that will be considered in the leakage losses so those losses will help us to uh, understand betterly uh, what are the efficiencies so if i sum up all those losses so those are the losses like say in between shaft and impeller there will be a mechanical losses and when my water is moving through the impeller there will be a certain amount of hydraulic losses which are going to take place and again, some other delivery losses, like say from the input to the output, uh, input to the uh, this eye of the impeller, like say from source of water to the eye of the impeller, and from the eye of the impeller to the delivery pipe. There are some other hydraulic losses which are going to take place. Now, uh, if we talk about the efficiencies, different efficiencies uh, which are generally used in the centrifugal pump, so those are said to be a first one manometric efficiency, second is the mechanical efficiency, third is the uh, volumetric efficiency and fourth is the overall efficiency. So uh, if you consider manometric efficiency which is given by the uh, ratio of manometric head to the head imparted by the impeller to the water. So whatever the manometric head we know that it is uh, the head against which my turbine uh, sorry centrifugal pump is working. So manometric is it's HM divided by head imparted by the impeller to the water. So of course this uh, head against which my centrifugal pump is working, it, uh, it is coming with the deduction of losses but whatever the head imparted by centrifugal pump is given by the expression Vw2 uh, multiplied by U2 divided by G and if I consider whatever the output or whatever the head against which my pump is working, that will be come up with the HM uh, whatever the this Vw2 multiplied by U2 divided by G minus losses what we have uh, discussed uh, while discussing the manometric head. So when we are calculating this manometric efficiency, it will become a ratio of HM divided by Vw2 U2 divided by G. So if you want to write down the expression for the manometric efficiency in the simplified manner, then it is coming out as uh, manometric efficiency which is given by equal to uh, G multiplied by HM divided by Vw2 multiplied by U2. Now the second efficiency that is mechanical efficiency uh, which is the ratio of power at the impeller divided by power at the shaft. So whatever the power at the shaft that would not available at the impeller directly. So there are some losses which are going to take place. Those are the said to be a mechanical losses what we have discussed previously. Uh, whenever my water uh, power reaching from the shaft to the impeller there are certain amount of losses due to the wearing, te uh, wearing and tearing effect which are going to take place. So uh, our mechanical efficiency is given by power at the impeller. Uh, we know that power at the impeller equation for the power at the impeller is given by rho q multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 the same expression can be written as vw upon g multiplied by vw2 multiplied by u2 where this w is given by the equation rho q multiplied by g now uh, 
divided by shut power. So if I divide this equation with the shut power, which is going to give us the uh, mechanical efficiency. Now the next efficiency is the volumetric efficiency, and which is going to it is going to consider the our next loss that it was a leakage loss. So we have considered almost all loss. So manometric efficiency will depend on the hydraulic losses, how much hydraulic uh, losses which are going to take place in the uh, process of uh, lifting water from the source to the delivery point. Again, mechanical efficiency going to consider the mechanical losses, and this uh, volumetric efficiency is going to consider. Uh, what are the uh, volume of water which has been uh, delivered from the pump and what are the volume of water which was passing from the impeller so this is going to consider your leakage uh, if there are any leakage which are going to take place so uh, volumetric efficiency okay here it is v so volumetric efficiency is given by the uh, ratio of quantity of water which is uh, delivered to the deliver from the pump at the outlet divided by or to quantity of water which was passing Per second from the impeller. So of course, if there are leakage, those uh, two quantities will not same. So in that case, uh, volumetric efficiency can be written as volumetric efficiency can be written as Q upon Q plus delta Q, where delta Q is the quantity of water which is going to loss through the leakages. And now uh, for the consideration for the all efficiencies, so uh, we will consider the overall efficiency, which is given by the expression as Output power of the pump divided by input power to a pump. Whatever our output power, whatever the uh, liquid or whatever the flow which has made in the flow, that is kinetic energy per second which was flowing at the outlet or which was coming at the outlet from the pump. So that kinetic energy per second we can also written as rho g q h, where this h would be the manometric head against which my pump is working. Divided by input power. Input power was our shaft power, basic power which was supplied to the impeller. But if you see here, whatever this manometric uh, head, we can write down by using manometric efficiency HM because our manometric efficiency was given by the equation is equal to HM GHM divided by VW2 multiplied by U2. So if I compute the uh, equation for the HM here, so HM will be equal to uh, manometric efficiency multiplied by VW2 U2 divided by G. And if I put this expression in this equation, then what we are getting here rho g q multiplied by manometric efficiency multiplied by vw2 u2 divided by g and now if i take this manometric efficiency at a side what we are getting a rho q vw2 multiplied by u2 divided by shaft power this is what the power at the impeller impeller power and the divided by shaft power we know that impeller power divided by shaft power is our mechanical efficiency so in short you can write down for the overall efficiency which is given by the product of manometric efficiency and mechanical efficiency hope you understood all those uh, four efficiencies which are based on the different losses which are going to take place uh, in the uh, process of lifting of liquid from source to the delivery point those are the references which i used while preparing my presentation thank you for watching